Hey, I'm Matt Agnew, and I'm going to take you back to where it all began in the Wheel of Time story, between the pages of Eye of the World. So sit back, pour yourself some wine, and come join me on this journey. Rand's gaze fell to the woman who had spoken. She too had been watching the flight of the raven, but now she turned back and her eyes met his. He could only stare. This had to be the Lady Moraine, and she was everything that Matt and Ewan had said, everything and more. When he had heard she called Nanavi child, he had pictured her as old, but she was not. At least, he could not put any age to her at all. There was a maturity about her large, dark eyes, a hint of knowing that no one could have gotten young. For an instant, he thought those eyes were deep pools about to swallow him up. She held herself with a grace, an air of command that made him feel awkward and stumble-footed. Good morning, mistress. Ah, Lady Moraine, Rand said. His face grew hot at his tongue's fumbling. She smiled, and Rand found himself wondering if there was anything he might do for her something that would give him an excuse to stay near her. Will you come to my house? My mother has apple cakes. I shall have to see, she replied, putting a hand on Ewan's shoulder. Her eyes twinkled with amusement, though she gave no other sign of it. Let's continue. Rand found sleep impossible, even with the icy die stretched out not a span away to shield his dreams. It was the thick air that kept him awake. Loyal's soft snores were a rumble that made Perrin seem non-existent, but they did not stop the wariness from claiming the others. The warder was still awake, seated not far from him with his sword across his knees, watching the night. To Rand's surprise, so was Nanabi. The wisdom looked at Lan silently for a long time, then poured a cup of tea and brought it to him. When he reached out with a murmur of thanks, she did not let go right away. I should have known you would be a king, she said quietly. Her eyes were steady on the warder's face, but her voice trembled slightly. Lan looked back at her just as intently. It seemed to Ran that the warder's face actually softened. I am not a king, Nanavi, just a man, a man without as much to his name, even as the meanest farmer's croft. Nanavi's voice steadied. Some women don't ask for land or gold, just the man. And the man who would ask her to accept so little would not be worthy of her. You are a remarkable woman, as beautiful as the sunrise, as fierce as a warrior. You are a lioness wisdom. A wisdom seldom weds. She paused to take a deep breath, as if stealing herself. But if I go to Tar Valen, it may be that I will be something other than a wisdom. I said I marry seldom as wisdoms. Few men can live with so much power in a wife, dimming them by her radiance, whether she wishes to or not. Some men are strong enough. I know one such. If there could have been any doubt, her look left none as to whom she meant. All I have is a sword and a war I cannot win, but can never stop fighting. I've told you I care nothing for that. Light, you've made me say more than is proper already. Will you shame me to the point of asking you? I will never shame you. The gentle tone, like a caress, sounded odd to Rand's ears in the water's voice, but it made Nanavi's eyes brighten. I will hate the man you choose because he is not me, and love him if he makes you smile. No woman deserves the sure knowledge of widows black as her bride price, you least of all. He set the untouched cup on the ground and rose. I must check the horses. Nanavi remained there kneeling after he had gone. Sleep or no, Rand closed his eyes. He did not think the wisdom would like it if he watched her cry. Thank you for joining me for this reading. The Wheel of Time adventure is just getting started. You can stream it now on Amazon Prime Video.